why Brunei and New Zealand? I think the simple calculation is that these two countries have really controlled the epidemic situation very well. Both countries have incidence rate well below 0 0.1 uh, infection per 100,000 population. So it's equivalent or even better than Singapore. We are at 0 0.06, they are uh, around that, uh, that level as well. Secondly is they are also small countries, so we are really not looking at very big numbers. So today if you look at the flight capacity, Brunei to Singapore per week is uh, 500 seats, uh, two flights a week. From New Zealand to Singapore is four flights a week, that's 1,002. So these are the numbers if you multiply out by their infection rate plus the fact that we have tests when they arrive, we are really looking at very, very low risk that we can manage. Why unilateral? This goes back 200 years. Uh. <laughs> Uh, if you think of Singapore uh, 200 years ago, we also unilaterally became a free port. In the early 80s, when we first built Changi Terminal 1, we also unilaterally opened up our skies. And when we were promoting free trade uh, in WTO and for, for, for world trade and promoting international trade, we also unilaterally removed most of our tariffs. In fact, for thousands of tariff items, we only have four lines of tariffs for alcoholic products. Having, so it is really an invitation to the world that for a small economy, open economy like ours, you are invited, we are open for business, you are invited to bring business activities, opportunities to Singapore. And that has always been our posture throughout history. That, however, did not prevent us from seeking deeper partnership with like-minded partners. So in the case of aviation, we also have air services agreement with uh, partners. In terms of free trade, we also have free trade agreements bilaterally as well as regionally with our closer partners. So this likewise is the same, but we unilaterally now open to Brunei and New Zealand. Uh, it does not preclude us continue to negotiate RGL, reciprocal green lane arrangements with like-minded partners for essential business travels. It also does not preclude us from going a step further, maybe upgrading some of these RGLs into broader travel bubbles or travel corridors. Yeah. So all in all, I think this is a small cautious step to start to reopen aviation and resuscitate Changi Airport as well as SIA. Uh, I believe we can strike a good balance between keeping Singapore safe and travelers here safe as well as um, reviving the air traffic sector. Remember, as a small open economy, to survive, we got to keep our borders open. To earn a living, we got to have connections with the world. And to thrive and to prosper, we must be an innovation hub.